What's up guys? Today we've got something I'm excited to check out. This is Perlison's top of the line subwoofer, the D215S. So shout out to Perlison for sending this over for me to review. And what we get inside the box, we get some documentation and some white gloves. Here is the power cord. And then we get four carpet sliders. So carpet sliders, and then we get some foam pads for your hardwood floors. So on the carpet, hardwood floors. And this comes in a nice little drawstring bag. So we're just gonna loosen this up. This is the bottom of the subwoofer. So on the bottom of the subwoofer, you can see the grill. And through the grill, there is another 15 inch driver down here. This isn't a push-pull configuration, just like the D212s. This weighs 202 pounds. So this is no lightweight. This is not a one-person job, even though I carried this up the stairs by myself. This is the D215, which means there are two 15-inch drivers in here. So there's a 15-inch on the front, and there was that 15-inch on the bottom in a push-pull configuration. The frequency response for this, there are three modes. There's a THX mode, which is rated down to 20 hertz. There is a large room mode, which goes down 15 hertz. And then there's a small room mode, which goes down to 24 hertz. And you can access all those settings right here by the two and a half inch LCD touch screen. It's a little capacitive screen that gives you all your menus and your DSP options. There is a 10 band PEQ in here as well. It's got all your phase, your polarity and all the settings, which we'll dig into a little bit later. But let's take a look size wise. We're looking at 37 and a half inches tall by 19 and a half inches wide. And then depth wise, it is 25 and a half inches in depth. So this is powered by 3000 watt amplifier. As far as ins and outs, up top, we have the service port, a trigger. We've got your left and right analog ins. We've got your balanced ins and outs. There are two, so you can daisy chain these if you want. And then there is the main power switch and then the power inlet. And then as you can see here, this is THX Dominus certified. So this is one of the first Dominus certified subwoofers on the market. Actually, I think it is the first Dominus certified subwoofer on the market. The subwoofer is gonna be placed behind my seats, which gives me the best response for my room. I'm gonna be pairing them with PSB PWM on wall speakers. Everything is hooked up to a Trinal Altitude processor and I'll be playing demos off of a Kaleidoscape and a Zipedi media player. I'm gonna be turning off the room correction in the Trinov and using the subwoofer's built-in DSP to get the best response for my space. So now let's take a quick look at some of the settings built into the subwoofers. To access the subwoofer's settings, you'll have to download an app that's available on both Android and iOS. In the upper right corner in the app settings, there's language, app version, and an about us page. Back on the main page, there's a group function which will volume gain attenuate according to the number of subs to the THX reference level. You can adjust the master volume from a negative 20 to a plus 12. And on the bottom, you can see that I've got three subwoofers hooked up. It'll give you the name of each one and how they're connected, which is via XLR, as you can see here in the green. Tapping on the icon to the right will bring you into the D215 settings. The first section is the EQ mode, which we went over earlier. Next is trim, which you can choose between negative 2.5 and plus three. Under crossover, you can turn that on and off from here. Choose a slope from 6 dB to 24. Adjust the crossover from 160 down to 30 Hertz. There's a phase adjustment from 0 to 270. Time delay from 0 to 100 milliseconds. And you can change the polarity to positive or negative. The next section is PEQ, which you can turn on and off. You can adjust the frequency band from 16 to 200 Hertz. Change the Q from 0.3 to 20. Adjust the gain from negative 20 to plus 3. And you do have 10 bands with 3 memory presets so you should have no problems getting this dialed into your system. The next section is the input control. You can specify which input will turn on the subs. Use a 12 volt trigger per input and adjust the gain from a negative six to a plus six for the RCA and XLR inputs. Under setup, you can choose between 60 minutes and five minutes before the subs turn off. Adjust the auto on sensitivity between low, medium, and high. Adjust the LCD brightness. Check the firmware version. And the last option is reset all. And that is it for all of these settings. First demo we're gonna check out is the eyeball scene in Blade Runner 2049. 
It's got a huge sustained peak around 35 hertz that should rattle the dishes in your kitchen. I had to shorten this demo because YouTube was hitting me with copyright notices. But did I say this should rattle the dishes in your kitchen? I meant to say that it should rattle your neighbor's dishes down the street. I've heard this demo many times and I can honestly say this is the cleanest level of output that I've heard yet from a subwoofer. Some subwoofers can sound bloaty, which makes this demo feel like the air pressure in your room is fluctuating up and down. But on the Prolisten, it's a constant steady stream of body pressurization. It's like putting your body in a vice grip and walking away. I almost feel like I can end this review right now because what else do I need to say? But I should probably throw on a couple more demos. Next up is Fury. I like the subtlety in this demo, so keep an ear open for the background effects. All right, here's the deal. I got a platoon of trap in this beat built by machine guns. I sent my tracks in. Jerry took them out. So I got tight tank guns there, there, possibly there. I don't know. I need you to rescue my guys. I'll take the guns out. I can do that. I like putting this demo on because on subwoofers that don't reach particularly low or can reach low, they can sometimes over-exaggerate what's happening in the background. What you should hear are vehicles driving in the background, or rather, feel vehicles driving in the background. It's kind of the same as if you're in a building and you hear a truck driving by. You don't really hear it drive by, but you can feel the vibration as it drives by. It might feel like the truck's outside your door or maybe two streets over. If your subwoofer can reach low enough without sounding boomy, you should feel the tanks and explosions happening in different parts of your room. If your sub is boomy, like say a soundbar subwoofer, it'll make it feel like the tanks are inside your room. With the Perlisten, it's so nuanced that those vehicles sound like they're about a mile away. Let's go ahead and bring up some more action. We're gonna check out Underwater on the Cloud Escape. At the beginning, there's a few explosions that go off back to back rapidly, and it ends with this huge 20 hertz bomb that'll blow up lesser quality subs. This is a great demo because you get those rapid fire successive hits that stop and go without any slop. It's also extremely tactile, so you're going to feel those hits right in your chest. And when it comes to the end, that build up to the bottom frequencies should vibrate your eyeballs. There's also a ton of low end extension that creates this claustrophobic feel in your space, so you'll feel this light pressurization throughout your room. I normally get this sensation with multiple subs, but this single D215 is creating this atmosphere all by itself. And finally, I've got to throw on Edge of Tomorrow. If this giant subwoofer can't hit these single digit notes, then it's not worth the asking price. I'm not sure if we're even on the air. Uh, this is. If you heard any kind of vibration or any kind of noise in the background of this demo, just know that was every single wall in my home theater vibrating. The drywall's 100% loose. The, the heating registers are loose. Everything is just shot. Um, yeah, this is hitting single digits, no problems. Not only can I hear the buildup to the bottom, but I'm feeling air pressurization everywhere. This thing is no joke. I'm worried for my neighbor downstairs right now. I'm gonna hear about this tomorrow morning. I just know it. I did take a measurement of the response I got in my space with a single D215. Keep in mind, if your space is smaller or larger than mine, you'll likely get a different result. But I was getting ample output down to seven hertz, which totally annihilated my room for Edge of Tomorrow. At the time of this video, D215 sells for $9,000. It ain't cheap, it's flagship pricing for a flagship subwoofer, 
But along with that price tag, you get what I think is the best built subwoofer out there for the money. At least the best that I've gotten a chance to use so far. It's got a distinct modern design and the densest enclosure that I've had in my theater. The built-in DSP is a great addition to get the sub dialed into your system. And I love that it has an app so you can make adjustments without having to get up out of your seat. Of course, build quality and convenience means nothing if the thing doesn't sound good. And out of the dozens of subwoofers that I've had in my space, including Perlison's own other subwoofers, this THX Dominus sub absolutely dominates everything that's come before it. For my space, I was getting tons of infrasonic response without making the sub bottom out, and the thing slams effortlessly for every single action flick I threw at it. There's zero bloat or sloppiness or anything that I felt colored the sound. It's got such a nimble agility that I even hooked it up to my two-channel setup and found that it's just as snappy and percussive as my smaller 10-inch subwoofer with outstanding control. So I think it's safe to say that you can put this in a high-end music-only system, or if you want to take your home theater system to the finish line, this is absolutely top tier status. So those are my thoughts on the Perlison D215 subwoofer. If you have the spare change and the spare space, this would be a worthy addition to any high-end audio setup. So what are your thoughts on Perlison subwoofers and speakers? Have you heard any and how do you think they stack up to the competition? Leave your comments down below and let me know. As always guys, thanks for watching. Be sure to like this video if you found it useful and subscribe if you haven't already and I'll see you again in the next video.